Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I wanted to talk all about hip pain in children. Um, I had a case last week. I actually had a very interesting day last week where, um, one, I had hip pain in child, and I'll talk about that in a sec. But first, my day started off with a patient coming in with the anaphylactic reaction. So I go in pretty quickly, and I do see her face swelling, but I don't see any lip swelling. I don't hear any wheezing. Um, I don't see any tongue swelling. And then she talks about her upper arm swelling. So I'm just like, eh, that's weird. Um, so I listen to her lungs really quickly, listen to her neck. I don't hear wheezing. I don't hear strider. I look in the back of her throat. Everything looks beautiful. I was like, have you been allergic to anything? She goes, no. And I was like, where, when did the swelling start? And she goes two weeks ago. So no hives either. So it's obviously not a, a allergic reaction. Um, so then I'm just like, wow, this is a pretty weird case. It's a case of facial swelling and upper extremity swelling for the past two weeks. And I was like, this kind of looks like SVC syndrome, but it's something I'd always read and never seen. She had SVC syndrome, it was crazy. And then later that day, I had a kid that came in um, with fevers, cough, congestion for a month, finally on amoxicillin, got off amoxicillin three days ago, but now coming in with um, inability to bear weight on his left hip. So that's what I want to focus on today in today's YouTube video. So let's get started. There are many differential diagnoses when you think about a child that has hip pain. Um, and a lot of it can be narrowed down between the history and the age of the child. And then I like to further break down hip pain in children into four different categories, um, inflammatory, infectious, orthopedic causes, and then neoplastic causes. Um, one of the most dangerous causes is infectious causes, and here we're mostly thinking about septic arthritis versus osteomyelitis. Um, unfortunately, this can happen in any age, but the history can help you narrow this down a lot as well. If they're having fevers, body aches, um, if they have any open wounds around that area, um, then you're going to want to rule out any infectious causes. Actually, um, our job in the emergency department is to do an infectious workup because any child with hip pain usually um, needs to have that ruled out before they can successfully say it's something transient and um, inflammatory and not dangerous. Um, so think about this first and then go to the other um, likely etiologies from there. So the next big things I like to think about are the inflammatory causes of hip pain um, or any type of joint pain. So the main one I think about with um, hip joints is transient tenosynovitis, which is actually more common than a septic joint. Um, then you can have juvenile idiopathic arthritis, and you can also have a GI associated arthropathy. So um, with transient tenosynovitis, um, it'll usually be one joint. It's more common than septic joint. Unfortunately, um, we do not know the etiology of this, and it, you can have low-grade fevers in this case. So again, you have to rule out the septic joint. Um, and juvenile idiopathic arthritis, or JIA, um, usually one more than one joint is affected here. Um, so if one, more than one joint is affected, have this high in your differential, um, then you can have some GI-associated arthropathy. So obviously, these little kiddos will be having GI upset along with um, some sort of pain in their joints. So have this hanger differential if they're having any GI symptoms. The next category I want to focus on is the orthopedic category of hip pain in children. And the three biggest things I like to think of are hip dysplasia, um, skiffies, and then leg calf perthes disease. So with hip dysplasia, um, usually this doesn't cause hip pain, um, but if it goes unnoticed throughout um, infancy, toddler, then around adolescence, it can cause hip pain. Um, and the toddler can cause a painless limp. Um, but usually if the child is upbringing in America and goes to a pediatrician, gets their immunizations, um, goes to their annual pediatrician, they will practice the Ortolini and the Barlow test. Um, and then that can usually have a good idea if the child has any hip dysplasia. Um, but if it goes unnoticed, no one does that, then they can have a painless limp in toddlers. Um, and then in adolescence, they can have, they can start having hip pain. Um, leg calf 
But this disease is a vascular necrosis of the hip joint. Um, its etiology is unknown and it usually presents in toddlers. And then um, adolescents, um, you will have to focus on skippies. So this is the um, adolescent obese male that's coming in with hip pain. Um, and then they will have the classic radiographic findings of ice cream falling off the cone. Um, so take a look at that. It's pretty cool. Um, those are the main orthopedic uh, causes of hip pain that I like to focus on. The last category is fairly easy to cover. Um, if the child is having any pain in their hip joint, you're going to get an x-ray and you're going to see some sort of neoplastic disease. Now, it usually doesn't happen in the actual joint itself. Um, and the most common neoplastic disease that involve the bone, it's either going to be proximal tibia or proximal femur. So it might mimic the hip joint area, but you are going to see this on a radiograph and be able to tell from there. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, I hope this was a good summary of how to approach hip joint uh, pain in a child. Um, I found my case pretty interesting. And um, if you want to check out any orbital cellulitis type summaries and videos. I did one last week. Uh, I covered a, a lot of the, the different differentials of the infections around the eye, preceptal cellulitis of the eye, and then postseptal orbital cellulitis of the eye and what you need to order from there. So go check that out if you're interested. See you next week, guys.